Welcome to the Azure AD Architecture Deep Dive Series. My name is Gloria Lee, and I'm a Program Manager in the Azure AD Engineering team. Hi, I am Ravi Venapusa. I'm also a Program Manager in the Azure AD Engineering team here at Microsoft. In this video, we're going to cover Hyper Azure AD Joint in the Managed Registration Flow. In the previous Hyper Azure AD Joint Federated Registration Flow video, we talked about why Hyper Azure AD Joint is important. Ravi, would you like to highlight some of these key points for us? Of course. Thanks, Gloria. Hyper Azure AD Joint is important for three key aspects. First, you can leverage conditional access policies using the required Hyper Azure AD Joint device to control access to cloud apps from a managed device. Second, you can configure passwordless authentication with Windows Solo for Business and FIDO2 for hybrid Azure Joint devices. And finally, you can enroll your on-premises devices into Intune co-management by using hybrid Azure Joint and manage your devices from the cloud. Gloria, let's walk through the managed registration flow for hybrid Azure Joint. Sounds good, Ravi. Let's get this started. Hyper Azure AD join triggers when group policy object is either not configured or configured to have enable automatic device registration. However, SCP should have been already configured at this point. Following that the computer reads the service connection point from Azure Active Directory to identify which tenant should have the device registered into. As a reminder, service connection point contains both tenant ID and the domain name that will be used for home run discovery in later steps. After reading the domain name, Workstation discovers whether or not the domain from previous step is managed by creating information from Azure Active Directory. At this time, the Workstation will establish credential by creating self-signed certificate. Once the certificate is created, the public part of the certificate will be presented and stored in on-premises Active Directory. At the point of the next sync cycle, Azure AD Connect will sync the device to Azure Active Directory and the device object is created. This device object shows up as a pending status until the device registration is complete. The workstation uses the domain and tenant information from SCP or registry to make the request to Azure Active Directory using private key of the self-signed certificate. Once Azure AD authenticates successfully, it issues the token to the sync device. In order to bootstrap the device into Azure AD, Cryptographic material for device key and transfer key are created on the device's trusted platform module, also known as TPM. The public part of the device key and the transfer key and a certificate request are sent along to the Azure AD with previous issue token. In step eight, the workstation is referred to Azure Device Registration Service, also known as DRS, to register the device. Azure DRS validates the token, updates the device object previously created by Azure AD Connect and creates a device certificate based on certificate request. In step 10, Azure DRS then responds back to the workstation with the device certificate and the device ID. The device certificate issued by Azure DRS is added to the machine's local store and will be used by the workstation during token request. What is worth noting here is that in this step, and all the steps below happens in the context of the local system of the workstation itself. This implies that if you have any outbound proxies in your environment or you're filtering at the edge of your network, you will need to allow either computer account authentication or allow lists for outbound traffic to Azure. Necessary ports and URLs to be whitelisted are documented, and you can find it in the descriptions below. Ravi, would you like to walk us through the next steps or how to perform the validation? Absolutely. To, uh, just like in the previous video on the federation, federated registration flow, to validate whether or not the process of hybrid Azure join succeeded, you can go into the workstation and launch the displayed command line, ds thread cmd forward slash status. Highlighted portions indicate that the device is both Azure AD join and domain join, indicating that it is now hyper Azure join. You can use the device ID mentioned here or the device display name that is mentioned here to search for this device in Azure AD portal itself. If you need more details about the process, please refer to the documentation link in the description below. An important thing to remember is that this managed registration flow acts as a fallback mechanism to the previous federated registration flow. If for any reason your federated registration flow fails and you have the Azure AD Connect uh, sync enable, uh, managed registration flow kicks in uh, to complete the hyper Azure AD joint process. 
This has been available since Windows 10 version 1803 and above. And finally, as you may have uh, heard about the recent Windows 11 announcement, a hybrid Azure AV join works exactly the same way in Windows 11, the way it works in Windows 10. So regardless of whether you use Windows 10 or Windows 11, you can enable hybrid Azure AV join for your devices. Back to you, Gloria. Thank you, Ravi. We want to thank you for joining us. We hope you find this video useful and we will be adding videos on different topics. Please see the description below for additional information. Thank you. Thank you for listening.